Hey, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and I can't wait to share the information in this video with you. It's on my most recent cure for IBS. And I really can't say cure because IBS is never really cured, but through something I found, I have cured about 95% of my symptoms almost all of the time. That is, when I follow this, I don't have any IBS symptoms at all. It's absolutely wonderful. And one of my lovely viewers turned me onto this. She said there is a woman named Heather Van Voris, and she has a great website, and she is an IBS sufferer since she was 11 years old, and over the course of several decades, she figured out those offending foods that we need to avoid in order to not have our IBS symptoms, and IBS is estimated to affect 60 million Americans, that's 20% of us, and the symptoms are debilitating. They are just no fun to deal with at all. It can range everything from bloating to diarrhea to constipation patient to pain in the abdominal area. It's like you get up in the morning and sometimes it's a good day and you think, oh good, that's wonderful. And then you get up other days and you realize that you're having, say, diarrhea, which is my problem. And I will, you know, be a little late to work because I have to deal with that situation. I have to plan my restroom visits. My IBS is difficult to deal with and it is no fun, but there are some people that literally become housebound due to the symptoms of IBS. Imagine not being able to drive to work or go to the shopping mall because you don't know when you'll need a restroom break. It is just not fun, and if you don't have it, bless you. Count yourself lucky because you really don't know how lucky you are. But if you do have it, I hope you'll pay special attention in this video. Maybe get out a pen and a pad of paper because this information can be life-changing for you as it has been for me. But first, if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things anti-aging that help us look and feel our best in our second half, then I hope you'll subscribe. And if you could give this video a thumbs up and or share it with any friends with this problem, that would be just wonderful. Okay, let's get into this. And below the video in the description area, I'll put a link to all of these resources. But how I came upon this is that one of my lovely viewers heard on one of my videos that I mentioned that I had IBS, and she said that I needed to get this IBS food trigger list. She said that following the foods recommended on this IBS food list had almost totally cured her IBS, and actually, I went ahead and got this free food list, and also I bought Heather Van Voris's book, and I'll try to show that here, because I have read it, and it's absolutely wonderful. But Heather Van Voris has a website, which I'll link below, and she actually has suffered from IBS since she was 11 years old. And she went to the doctors, and the doctors basically poo-pooed the condition, said, you'll just have to live with it. But over the years, she developed a list of safe foods and unsafe foods. And basically, when you follow those foods, it, it really is almost a cure for your IBS. It is absolutely wonderful. And one thing I will say, and I'm drinking in my favorite mug, the I Am Fabulous mug, which I will try to link below the video. But instead of coffee, which I do love coffee, and I'm having a hard time quitting coffee, but this is peppermint tea. And I'll actually link this brand of peppermint tea below. I have it here. Oh, here it is. It is called the Stash brand of peppermint tea. It's caffeine free. And peppermint is known to be a great GI settler. It, it just settles down your colon, your GI system. It's really, really good for that. And it tastes good too. And I'll be talking more about peppermint tea in just a few minutes. And again, it was following the foods on this food list that made all the difference for me. And I noticed an improvement in the second or third day. And by the fifth day, I had absolutely no symptoms. And when I follow this exactly, I don't have any IBS symptoms at all. And it is, it is absolutely a godsend. It's absolutely wonderful. So let me give you the five steps that I followed to really put my IBS largely into remission. Step one is to focus most of your diet on things like chicken and fish, vegetables, and high fiber rich foods like rice and potatoes, both brown rice and white rice, and both white potatoes and sweet potatoes. So step one is really focus on chicken and fish and vegetables and some grains for the most part. Step two is to avoid trigger foods. And these trigger foods are listed right here in the red here. They are foods like beef and pork, no bacon, anything like that. Dairy foods, avoid dairy, no cheese, too high fat. Avoid egg yolks, but the whites of eggs are okay. Avoid dark meat poultry because it's too high fat. Avoid fried foods of all types. Avoid butter, fats, and chocolate. 
So basically in step two, avoiding the trigger foods, it's basically beef and pork, dairy, and high fat foods of all types, including butter, fats, and chocolate. That was step two. Step three is to focus on soluble fiber foods. It's hard for me to say, but that's in the green here. And these foods should be the staples of your diet. They should be the first thing you eat on an empty stomach. They relieve both diarrhea and constipation. These are your totally safe foods. They're foods like rice, pasta, oatmeal, cornmeal, fresh white breads, but not whole wheat breads, barley, rice cereals, corn cereals, flour and corn tortillas, things like white potatoes, sweet potatoes, other foods there, avocados, and applesauce. Those soluble fiber foods should be the basis of your diet because they really do normalize your bowel and get things running in a wonderful way, so to speak. And step three is to be a little careful with insoluble fiber foods and Heather has them here in the pause area or the yellow light. They're the red light foods to avoid, the green light foods to go for, and the yellow light foods to be a little careful with. And basically with insoluble fiber foods, you never eat them on an empty stomach. You eat them in small portions, always with the soluble fiber food like we just discussed before. You eat them as often as possible, but eat them very carefully. They're healthy foods. You just have to be careful about them and always cook them, chop them, puree them, because that makes them easier for your body to digest. But they're foods like the following, whole wheat, wheat bran, granola, seeds and nuts, popcorn, whole beans, lentils, berries, grapes, raisins, cherries, pineapple, rhubarb, melons, peaches, nectarines, apricots, pears, citrus, apples, but they're safe if peeled, dates, prunes, peas, lettuce and greens of all types, things like Brussels sprouts, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, etc. And those are all really healthy foods. So don't think that you can't eat the insoluble fiber foods. Heather wants you to eat those foods. You just have to be careful. And with things like salads, and I used to eat a ton of salads basically as a meal, and I try not to do that so much now. Whenever I eat a salad, I really like to make sure that I have one of the safe foods first, like I'll have a chicken breast or a sweet potato, something like that, before I eat the salad, because salad on an empty stomach can cause people problems. Now, step four is the hardest step for me, and it's why I have this peppermint tea here. I know that looks terrible. In step four, you avoid coffee, including decaf, all caffeinated beverages. You avoid soda pop of all types, which is good for me because I quit diet pop, my last bad pop habit about two years ago, which was really great. Avoid alcohol and artificial sweeteners. However, stevia is one that you can get away with. I've noticed that I've been able to get away with stevia because it is a natural sweetener. And step five is to drink a lot of peppermint tea because it does settle your stomach. It settles your GI system. And also it does not have caffeine, so you can drink it before bed. It is very relaxing and it tastes good too. And I hope that you can use the food list exactly as it's explained and that none of these foods cause you problems. Now, for those of you who have followed my channel, you know that I have issues with carbs and sugars. I really just have to stay on a low carb diet. That's the way I stay slender. That's the way I don't crave food. When I start adding in a lot of things like potatoes and white rice, beans, things like that, tortillas, things in part recommended on this list, then all of a sudden I'm craving food, I'm eating everything in sight, and I just don't feel very good. So if you are like me and are also kind of sensitive to carbs and sugars, I hope you aren't because it's really hard. But if you are, what I do is I focus on chicken and fish and vegetables. I don't really go so much into the fruits that they allow here, no apples and berries and things like that. I kind of leave those out of my diet. And then in terms of the soluble fibers, I do have sweet potatoes because I'm kind of on a paleo type low carb diet, but I don't do the white potatoes. I don't do the rice. I don't do the oatmeal. I don't do the pasta, things like that. I just cut those out. And in doing so, I get the benefits of the IBS diet that really helps my IBS, but I don't trigger my overeating by eating all the high carbohydrate foods. Well, that was a look at what I have used to pretty much cure my IBS symptoms. When I stick with the foods on that food list, I almost don't experience IBS at all. It's absolutely wonderful. And if you have things which have helped you combat your IBS or just comments on the condition in general, then I hope you'll list them in the comment section below the video.
And if you're interested in the things that help us look and feel our best as we get to be 30, 40, 50, 60 like me, 70, 80, and beyond, then I hope you'll subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and or share it with a friend. Okay, before I get into my brief thought for the day, I wanted to show you some of the makeup I had on. But basically, I got the Sephora Favorites kit, which I hope they still have when you see this video because it is wonderful. And I actually ordered one for my mother-in-law and two of my daughter-in-laws. One of them is just somebody my son is dating, but I almost think of her as a daughter-in-law. She's wonderful. And I got myself one too. So the rest of them are under the tree right now, but I absolutely love this. And this is a Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette, and it's what I have on my eyes right now, and I think it's absolutely beautiful. And if you have not used Natasha Denona shadows, they are amazing. And I'll show you this real quick. There is this beautiful shimmer that I have on my lids, absolutely gorgeous. This is what I have in my transition area, like that, and then that is in the outer corner. That is so pigmented. These shadows last all day. They're truly wonderful. And this is a beauty blender. I did not use this one, but I used a beauty blender. It's wonderful. I used it to pat in my foundation. And this is a brow gel, very popular brow gel. It works great. I use that. This is Grand Lash, which helps your eyelashes grow. I've used this in the past. It's really good. This is a little NARS bronzer. However, I went ahead and I used that for my contour. Really, really like that. Beautiful, very neutral color. Then this is a lip oil. I don't have that on, but it's beautiful. I tried it. This is a great mascara, which I have on, and this is the Fenty Beauty Volumizing Mascara, and I think it really is beautiful. I've not tried this yet. This is a Quai Leave-In Conditioner. This is a primer, which is apparently very popular at Sephora. I used it, and so far, so good. I think it's really helping my makeup adhere beautifully. And then this is an interesting product that I should have used. I didn't. I can hardly wait to try it. But this is the Dr. Jark primer that nulls out red on your face. So you put it on green and then it dries and it dries matte. It's a great primer to keep your makeup on and it nulls out your red, which is really great. Now, in terms of my blush, I have this blush palette, which I absolutely love. And I've mentioned this before. This is the Sephora Micro Smooth Enchant Palette. It is very generous in size, and it's only like $19.99 for the whole thing. And you get a wonderful little highlighter here. You get a great contour, and then you have a beautiful blush, and then a beautiful blush highlighter. So anyway, sorry, you can hardly see that, but it's absolutely beautiful. Then on my lips, I have a couple of different BK Beauty shades. One is lighter, one is darker, beautiful nudes. Then I have her little lip pencil in the color, what is it, Sweet Pea, and this is my favorite one. It is really a nice little kind of universal nude. You can see it right there. Absolutely works with about any color lipstick you want to use it with. It's kind of a your lips but better color. And then over that, I have a Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm, and these are very popular. And this one is in the color Fussy, and I'll put a little more on. Absolutely gorgeous. I just have it kind of in the middle. It's just kind of a frosty pink color. Absolutely beautiful, just a little iridescence just to give your lips that extra pop. Okay, it's that time in the video where I give you a little thought for the day. And to do that, I'll be choosing from the Louise Hay How to Love Yourself cards. Hopefully we'll get a positive thought to think about for today. Okay, here's a good card. I accept all of myself. I accept all of myself. The work I do on myself is not a goal. It is a process, a lifetime process. I choose to enjoy the process. The work I do on myself is not a goal. It's a process, a lifetime process. I choose to enjoy the process. Oh, friends, I absolutely love this card because it reminds me about the idea of progress, not perfection. While it is important for each of us to do the best we can with the blessings that we were given in our lives, it's also important to realize that we're never going to be perfect. There's only one person in this universe who is perfect, and it is not either of us, that's for sure. So friends, let's just do the best we can for today. Let's be grateful in this day. Let's be thankful in this day. Let's do the best we can in this given day. But let's realize that it's progress, not perfection, and that each day it's important to count our blessings and enjoy the journey. Take care, and I'll see you in my next video.